just had a question in in the software. Um, yeah. What is what is the rank for? Mm. What does that mean? Good question. Um, the rank it depends a little bit by a data source, but uh, for Google Scholar it means the relevance of the results. So this is the order in which the results come back um, if you do a search on the Google Scholar web interface. Right. So the first result is the one that Google Scholar thinks is most relevant to your study. And we can see here that it's incivility, bullying, both in the title. So clearly, um, Google Scholar thought that's really relevant because you search for bullying or incivility, and this one has both. So that, that must be the most relevant mm -hmm. article for you. Mm -hmm. um, sta standard Google, uh, sorry, publish or perish sorts by the number of citations. Mm -hmm. So that's the default mm -hmm. that publish or perish has. And that's not necessarily the same as relevance. So we can see here, the article with the largest number of citations was only fourth in terms of relevance. Mm -hmm. This article that's first in terms of relevance is second in terms of citations. Usually mm -hmm. the order is pretty similar, mm -hmm. but not always. Um, does MDX have um, a license for the Microsoft one? Just because I, I did a search and Google Scholar is sending me to, well, it could be good. I'm not going to read 600 things so uh, I was just wondering whether the university does have um... We, um, no but you don't need a subscription what you do is you request um, a, a key yourself and I've just included a link to uh, the oh, help okay. file uh, mm -hmm. where it tells you how to do this it, it's it's a while ago uh, since I did this but when I did it it took me literally 90 seconds to a minute and you're right, Google Scholar often gives you a lot of results that are mm. not terribly relevant. So mm. unless you seriously limit it by um, picking particular journals by ISSN, not by journal name, or only search for the last year, you get so many results that mm. you, you can't really deal with them. If with Google Scholar, you're not actually sure whether you've um, used the the right title words or the right keywords or the right journal titles and you don't want to get a thousand results with rubbish, you can quickly say I only want the first 20 results to see whether what you get looks like something you might be interested in. Um, so rather than saying I want all of the thousand results that Google Scholar can give me, I just want to have in the first instance, I want to have the 20 most cited to see whether my search uh, terms are relevant. Um, and if you find oh, all the results I get are irrelevant, then you might need to refine your research strategy. Liana, um, I um, try to uh, save the results uh, yeah. and they come in automatically to new fi fi file and in my uh, computer. Mm -hmm. I'm just asking, is it possible when you close the uh, um, the app and when you open it do will stay in there or yes all the searches will stay there that's why you can see all these searches here um if you're not deleted they will if you don't delete them they will stay there amazing actually i'm quite impressed uh, amazing amazing <laughs> you can repeat them in a couple of months um and uh, you can just do them do them again yeah, there's some data sources that have additional fields um, that um, you can search for. For instance, um, if you're curious whether um, anyone at Middlesex University has done work on bullying, staying with the same example because it's an example that um, we might all be able to relate to to some extent. You can see, wow, there's been quite a few um, people affiliated with Middlesex who have been doing research on bullying. Uh, so you might have a look at those and see, oh, I didn't know that. Um, and um, 
Poseidon, yeah. Um, he has done um, key work on, on bullying. Um, but there's also Roger Klein, who is a, a research fellow um, in our research institute. He's done a lot of work on bullying in the NHS. Um, and then there's Roger Klein again. Uh, the other names, um, I don't know. Um, these might well be people in um, the science faculty. But this is a good way to find out whether there's people in uh, your university um, who might be able to help you. Okay, what you can also do um, if you think, okay, I want to run the same search again with slightly different parameters, um, then you just cl click on duplicate current search and then maybe you want to look for articles in uh, the last two years only uh, and you don't have to type um, all the other terms again. Um, and then if you think, oh, I, I want to get rid of all these terms, I want to do a new search, you just click on clear all. I'll put a link in the chat to a web page with some training resources for Publish or Perish. Um, there's a list of frequently asked questions. There's a link to the online manual. There's also a tutorial. Uh, and um, I have a couple of uh, presentations uh, specifically about Publish or Perish as well that are referenced here. Um, in general, what I would say is make sure you spend um, enough time to create a search strategy that works for you. Don't just go for the first possible uh, results. Explore a little, uh, use different words, uh, use different combinations, use different databases. It's much better to spend a few days coming up with the right, the right search strategy that will give you just enough results. So not too many, so you get lots of irrelevant results, but also not too few, so you're missing articles because in the case of workplace bullying, you're only searching for bullying and not for incivility, which has been a more recent term to describe the same phenomenon. So spend sufficient time to do this. And then uh, when you've come up with um, some key articles in the field, you might want to go back to your supervisors and say, um, this is what I've come up with so far in my literature review. Do you think I'm on the right track? Are these really the key articles in your field? Um, and if you're lucky, um, your supervisor tells you, yes, um, these are the key articles. You've missed one or two that you might want to look at. And I'm really happy to see that you found an article that I didn't know about yet because it's either recently published or you had such a good search strategy that you found an article that your supervisor wasn't familiar with. Because remember, when you're doing a PhD, you learn from your supervisors, but if you do your job right, certainly by the end of your third year, your supervisors will be learning from you as well because you'll become the specialist um, on, on your topic. Mm -hmm.